Good afternoon, Mrs Surley here. Welcome to our vlog in which we explain the Key Stage 3 assessment model we use in the Mathematics Department at Broome Park. At the end of Year 6, your child is given a Key Stage 2 SAT score in English and Maths. This score is between 80 and 120, with 104 being a round average. The Key Stage 2 Maths score is used to calculate the non-negotiable expected grade which your child is expected to achieve at the end of Year 11 when they leave Broome Park. The grade we expect every student to achieve in every GCSE subject is derived from that Key Stage 2 score. This is the case in all schools across the country. For maths, we only use the Key Stage 2 maths score. We use this information to create a flight path for every student from the start of Year 7 through to Year 8, 9, 10 and eventually to their final GCSE grade at the end of Year 11. Of course, we know students don't make progress in a robotic way but this helps us see how much progress a student is making at a given time. For example, a student achieving a score of 104 at Key Stage 2 Maths is expected to achieve a Grade 5 in Maths at the end of Year 11, and so we work on this flight path for that student. At Broome Park we study a Mathematics Mastery curriculum. This focuses on depth and not breadth and aims to teach students how to truly understand the maths behind a question rather than simply a trick to answer it. Teaching is delivered in a concrete, pictorial and abstract way to support problem solving, which is a key skill in the reformed, more challenging GCSE maths exams. Each half term we deliver a module focused on a different topic of mathematics. For example, in Year 7, Spring 2, we teach fractions. We target specific I can mastery statements in each module, which are building blocks for being successful in that module. For example, in Year 7, Spring 2, a mastery statement could include I can multiply and divide fractions. We assess the progress students make against these mastery statements using a pre and post test, before and after each module. We assess between three and six mastery statements for each unit, depending on the requirements of the module. This demonstrates really clearly to us how much progress your child has made in each module and allows us to intervene in the classroom as necessary. Students are scored out of eight against each mastery statement and are graded emerging, developing, secure and mastered accordingly. We aim to share this information with you at home a short while after the completion of each module and clearly indicate the linked tasks you can use to support at home using our online Hegarty Maths platform, which we expect students to be using for a minimum of 30 minutes every week at home. This rich information is vital in helping us to understand where your child is doing well and where they need more support. But how does this relate to their GCSE expected grade? Well. The score achieved in the post-test across all of the assessed mastery statements is used to give a GCSE flight path grade, which indicates how much progress each child is making toward their non-negotiable expected grade at the end of Year 11. So, a child who achieves all of the marks in a post-assessment will sit at the top of the flight path for that point in their journey. Every student has an individual flight path based on their Key Stage 2 score but every student can score anywhere on the flight path at that point in time, depending how well they achieve in the assessment. This clearly demonstrates to all of us how much progress your child is making compared to their expected score based on their starting point. So for example, a child with a Key Stage 2 score of 104 has a flight path running from a grade of 2C at the start of Year 7 to a non-negotiable expected grade of a 5 at the end of Year 11. In Year 8, Autumn 2, if they achieve all of the marks possible in that assessment, they would sit at the highest point possible at that point in their school journey. And you can see for this student, it would indicate they are making outstanding progress, beyond what we would expect based on their starting point. Across each module, the scores are then added together to give a fuller picture of the progress a student is making. And you can clearly see how well your child is doing compared to their personal flight path. We have created a consistent path from Year 7 to Year 11, but we know that everyone learns at different speeds, and so we expect natural variation over time, but we are looking for continual progress from the students. Also given on the report is an effort and commitment grade. 
one being the highest and four being the most in need of improvement so as not to affect their progress made. More information is given in the report about what each number means, but this will give you a good indication of how hard your child is working in their lessons. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this vlog. We hope you have found it informative. If you have any questions, please use the contact box below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.